Welcome to uh, an extra bit. This is a uh, business catalog for computer parts and accessories from the mid-90s, thinking about 95, 96 or so. And uh, I used to get these through my parents' business, and I just loved pouring through them as a kid. So we're just going to take a little uh, stroll through Nostalgia Lane here, going through this and see what was on offer around that time. Uh, this is a Swedish catalog, so I'll do a little translation on the fly where I needed, but um, I, I just love flipping through these. Just seeing all the stuff that I might want to buy or things that I would never be able to afford, basically. But uh, let's go ahead and get started right away. Uh, we start with just kind of like an inventory or index, right? And uh, ooh, there's a quick cam. I remember those. They were uh, terrible webcams, but they looked really cool. Terrible by today's standard, but awesome back then. Uh, we see the uh, Intel Overdrive processor, which of course uh, we'll get to later. But man, those were cool. I didn't have one. Getting into the beginning here, we can see we have uh, all the office suites from this era. Uh, I always love these box designs. I think that's what really made it cool for me to flip through this thing. Um, just, I love the box designs of business software from the 90s. I have a few big boxes for that, uh, but uh, just a few. And they just super hefty, awesome. Especially here, this cloud pattern that Microsoft used on their uh, Office 95 suite. Even the background here has uh, a little cloud here. Uh, and there's the old Microsoft Office, of course, from the uh, 311 era, but then the new 95 with the cloud and cool. Oh, just love these designs. There's uh, Microsoft Plus. Got a little bit of uh, operating systems down here as well for uh, Windows NT, or server related. Mail Server 3.5, Visual Basic, Visual C++. Just fantastic. And we got to uh, some other software that might be more for the home. Uh, ooh, comes with uh, 130 Swedish clip arts. Awesome. You got Works 4.4, uh, 4.0, Encarta 96. I had 95 shipped with my computer. Loved Encarta. Thought it was awesome. Fury 3, some games in here. Uh, we got the uh, Microsoft mouse and the natural keyboard. I did a natural keyboard. Uh, I did have a uh, Intelli mouse with the uh, scroll wheel or whatever. Ooh, three t shirt included. Simon or 3D Pro. Always wanted that joystick, never had it, but it's awesome nonetheless. You got some uh, extra stuff for uh, things like uh, memory expansions and RAM upgrades, you know, software RAM. You could just download more RAM. I uh, got some other uh, office applications here. Internet access. Adobe Photoshop 3.0 and PageMaker 6.0. Sorry, 3.05. I mean, it's Photoshop. I uh, think I had this version through other means. I can't exactly remember, but antivirus software. Quark Express. I don't know why this picture is so low quality there. Uh, oh, Black Box 2.0. This this seems familiar. I'll, I'll put a bigger picture of it here, but that uh, this software seems really familiar. It must have come on some sort of a... It's interesting, this screenshot here it looks like it's a Mac version, but it must have come on some sort of demo CD or something. I have very vague memories of this particular interface looking very familiar. That's really interesting. I think it's just like a basic photo manipulation software. You know, find the highlights and change edges and things like that. Uh, we got Vizio. Well, old school Vizio. Ooh, Netscape Navigator 2.0. Netscape subscription software. Oh, Netscape Navigator 2.0 comes with email, news, support for Acrobat, Macromedia Director, and QuickTime. Ooh, it has inline plugins and security, etc. Well, I want some of that etc. security. That's probably good. Ooh, Netscape Power Pack. Just, again, it's like I love the big boxes that these things came in, not necessarily the software itself. You get into Lotus. Lotus Note. Fantastic. Uh, again, I'd, I really like these boxes, but uh, as far as the software, I didn't ever use Lotus Notes. I think I had a DOS version of it or something, but... Oh, and Claris Draw and Claris Works. Never used any of this stuff, but the boxes, I mean, they look so good. Huge, hefty boxes. Uh, yeah, as a kid, I mean, I'm just probably not a normal kid, but just going through these business uh, catalogs and just lusting after all this software I never would need or have, but I just thought it looked really cool. And then, of course, was something I really wanted was Corel Draw. I hadn't, didn't have any artistic talent to draw anything, but I really wanted Corel Draw. Um, it seemed like a V drawing software back in the day uh, with add-ins and clip art galleries and ooh, 15,000 clip art. I'm sure every single one of those 15,000 is just top-notch quality as well. Just wanted that really bad. I don't know why, but um, just Corel Draw was, I, yeah, I wanted that for a long time. Never got it. RAM doubler, doubled memory. Simple as that. Perfect. 
Uh, there's that aforementioned quick cam. Uh, again, I, I think I had that one uh, later on. It was pretty poor webcam. I mean, it worked, but, uh, you know, by today's standards, it's awful. But uh, software to remove old software. And screensavers, Looney Tunes, Farside, Simpsons, Totally Twisted. Those were, uh, those were awesome. They got a demo version of that or something. Uh, never owned the actual full software suite. Um, got some flowchart software, some Swedish home economy. So economy 96. So yeah, 95, 96 is when this was out then, I'm guessing. Uh, got your uh, generic uh, Norton software, Norton Utilities. I think everyone had that in some way or shape. Um, and uh, Norton and Virus Windows 95. I did have to buy this, I believe, at some point because I did get a uh, virus on my computer. So I had to uh, get this. Uh, I'm not sure how I got the virus, you know, through <clears throat> appropriate means. I'm not sure where that came from. Not that I was downloading anything I shouldn't have. Getting into the hardware soon, but yeah, uh, some extra accessories for uh, Windows 95 and the office packs and everything. And uh, here we get to the actual computers, right? So we have an IBM Aptiva 931 P75. So it tells you around this era, right? Pentium 75, 8 megabyte of memory, 540 meg hard drive, 14 inch SVGA color monitor. We don't want any of that, you know, black and white monitor. Speakers, Soundmaster 16 card, and a quad speed. Uh, for CD-ROM. I wonder if Soundmaster 16 compatible with real Soundmaster 16. Hmm. Anyway, I, I do remember seeing big box stores, you know, or uh, retailers, the all-in-one kits that had all the stuff you needed to get your computer up and going. I thought those always looked so cool. Uh, and I did buy an AST somewhere. I think it might be featured later. We'll see. Oh, and there's that uh, awesome IBM. I can't remember the name of that ThinkPad that has the uh, keyboard that pops out. LGR did an awesome feature on that one. It's a cool watch. Uh, so yeah, this Computer then sold for about 15,000 kroner, and I'll do the uh, translation here of dollars and then adjust for inflation as well to give you an idea what we're talking about here. Uh, but that was a very appealing thing for the home user because, I mean, computers were really taking off here. People were buying their home computers as a full multimedia suite, right, to do everything. Oh, we got these chunky compact desk pros. Prolinea was the lighter one, I think. Um, and they're like, you know, basically brick style laptops, awesome computers. Ooh, down here we have a Satellite Pro. I'll uh, put a bigger picture up for this, this one, but it's the uh, Satellite Pro with the docking station. It has the multimedia features, the speakers on the side, and I bet that thing weighed a ton. But uh, Toshiba satellites were really tanks of laptops. Um, expensive, but man, you got what you paid for there. They were chunky machines. Uh, so yeah, here we have the AST computers. Actually, I think the one I had was exactly here. Advantage 812 multimedia tower, Pension 100 megahertz, 8 meg battery RAM, 850 megabyte hard drive, 14 inch monitor, 14,000 kroner. Uh, about what that Aptiva cost then, but uh, it's not pictures, it was a tower. And I do have that now, and I've been using it for streaming and playing, and it's one of my favorite computers now, the US equivalent one, but that was the machine I had. Um, I did not have the you know top spec as it shows here, right? I think I bought mine later. Uh, but yeah, this is the Pension 100 megahertz v version, which seems to be the top one. And then, ooh, some delicious CRTs as well. These uh, Sony Multiscans are probably harder and probably more expensive now almost. They're becoming like unobtainium, it seems like. They get snagged up right away on any marketplaces. Uh, they're super popular, just you know, Sony Trinitron and things like that. Kind of seen a resurgence in that. A good quality Sony CRT these days can uh, fetch a bundle. And we have some other uh, lesser known brands, probably Brilliance. I don't even remember that. Mag, I definitely remember. That was kind of like more the value proposition, yeah much cheaper than the Sony's there. And you have the ordering form. Uh, you can actually fill out what you wanted to order. Um, looks like we have the camera again there. Ooh, I think I had a desktop 850C. That seems to ring a bell. That design at least. Pretty on my school reports on that, thinking I was so cool using color and everything, but it, it wasn't cool, but I thought it was. Trackman. Awesome. Internet phone for free. Great. Talk for free over the internet. You know, service charge not applied. Um, more monitors. Ooh, got a video card here as well. The ATI, ATI Mach 64. And remember, this is a business catalog, right? So you're not going to find, like, you know, games games benchmarking and things like that. It's going to be specifically for businesses. And in this case, we have the Graphics Pro Turbo 2 megabyte, 1280 by 1024, 256 colors. You go into 4 megabyte one. That's the same with 16.8 million colors, much more expensive. Ooh, Turbo 4 megabyte, 1600 by 1280. Graphics Wind Turbo. All of them say uh, uh, specify VLB or PCI bus. That's interesting. So I assume it came with both uh, models there. That's pretty cool. I don't remember that. But again, this is more for, you know, 
they're, they're touting the resolution. They don't care about performance. Uh, it's just resolution, so that comes sort of with the memory. Like the Mach 64 was in a lot of uh, pre-builds on era. So yeah, printers again here. Uh, pretty sure I had the 850C. Yeah, that's, that seems to ring a bell. Oh, and here's some uh, cool uh, all-in-one multimedia expansion kits. So Aztec uh, it would come down with a CD-ROM drive, software, uh, sound card, and this one here, uh, and speaker. So if you had a computer that was lacking all those things, you just buy this kit, smack all the stuff in your computer, and bam, you had a multimedia computer, right? That was the idea. Uh, it was a cool way to, to get your computer upgraded. Wave Rider Pro 32 at 3D. Ooh, nice. Support for MPU 401 and MT32 MIDI interface. Called out here. Yamaha OPL3 FM synthesizer. Dynamic filtering. Comes with some, uh, you know, calling software and everything. That was a good value. Ooh, and I remember seeing the uh, CD towers. Like, I had no use for one. Obviously, they're super expensive. But I wanted one because it looked cool. Uh, I did not need to copy the same disc that many times. Uh, but man, was that cool. Pioneer CD tower. Um, oh, these are all readers. So these aren't even burners. So that's a burner, which was... Whew, you see the tower here. It's 60,000 kroner here, but then the burner, the four-speed burner is 26,000 kroner. I'll uh, do the translation on that one, because that is not cheap. But, you know, you got to pay to play if you wanted a burner back in the day. Oh, and I remember seeing these uh, multi-disc CD-ROM drives. Um, again, thinking I needed it. I did not need it. Spoiler alert. Uh, but I thought they were just so cool. And then you had uh, Creatives, or Sound Blasters, uh, yeah, Creative Labs. Their... Um, Kind of same bundling of multimedia. Here's one that had everything in it, uh, including a joystick and everything. So if you had a machine that was lacking multimedia, buy one of these and good to go. And pretty uh, good uh, price performance on that one, I think. Uh, we have uh, some uh, art pads. I really wanted a drawing pad, but I never got one because I could never justify the cost. I imagine they weren't that good back then. Probably got a lot better these days. Um, but I really wanted one because I want to draw, even though I have no artistic talent of drawing, but it was cool. Pretty sure I got internet at some point through one of these like internet in a box solutions that came with a modem and a you know starter pack and everything. 33.6 modem. Uh, modems, modems, modems. Yeah, there you go. Internet in a box 2.0. 2.0, so it's better. I'm going to hold that for 2.1 though. Here it's even better. But yeah, modems. Um, I think I had this modem of some variety. That's like very sharp design. Seems to ring a bell. I'm not sure why, but it's, it's modems. And that's what we had back in the day. That's the only way we can get online. It wasn't fast, but it did a job. Um, some scanners. Expensive scanners, but ooh, I remember I had... Not the Logitech one, I don't think. I had an off-brand of some variety. It was like a hand scanner. You plugged in a PCI card, or even an ISA card, I can't remember. You held your hand and drug the scanner over the page, and it was scanned slowly. Uh, and if you, like, sneezed and it did, like, a jaggedy pattern and the image would be all warped. I used that for a school project thinking I was so cool. And, again, spoiler alert, that was not cool. Um, scanners, expensive things for sure. And this one is so expensive, just call it because it has the inserts to uh, probably do negatives and, and all that good stuff. Those ended up using or being more expensive. And, again, this is a, you know, business catalog, so you got to put it in perspective on, on what it was used for. Uh, we got some more scanners, some expensive scanners. Ooh, and here we go. we got zip drive. And then a jazz drive at the same time, too. Zip drive um, doesn't look like this is the USB one. This is just a normal, yeah, SCSI PC or Mac for parallel port. Not the USB one yet. I had the USB one, so I bought mine later with the translucent blue shell. I still have it. Uh, and then the jazz drive, which is definitely more expensive, but supported, you know, a gig on each disc. But the zip drive was pretty popular until the uh, CD-ROM came around and just annihilated it because it was so cheap. Uh, pretty quickly it turned a much cheaper solution. But it was a while there I was using the zip drive pretty uh, extensively for copying things from my uh, school internet, because they had broadband, right? Uh, we have some uh, connect your computer to your TV, which certainly did not look as sharp as they portray here. Uh, no sirree. But, you know, it was cool. Everkey 3 Grand Art. Connect your computer to a TV. Ethernet card. We got some PCMCI modems. I think everyone who's ever picked up a retro laptop that probably has a bundle of these laying around. They're pretty worthless right now. Uh, some floppy disks and uh, yeah, CDs, which of course took over pretty quickly um, from uh, you know disks and everything. Uh, then we're going to uh, some uh, Microsoft Open Licensing school packages. I think super interesting, which is licensing agreements and everything. And we got the world premiere of the Pentium Overdrive, and oh my goodness, 
I'll put a bigger picture here, but the quality on this font or the print is awful here. I don't know what happened here. They just put it in, you know, paint Windows 95 and started to explode it, and it looks pretty bad. I can't even tell what the uh, processor numbers are here. But anyway, upgrading your pension PC from 60 to 120, 66 to 133, or 75 to 125. Um, it was a good deal, like, if that's all you wanted. Um, I did not have... Uh, so let's see, yeah, this is the one I bought, actually. So I had a 486SX33 and a compact uh, Presario CDS all-in-one, and it had a, yeah, SX33, and I bought the DX4100 for that, uh, and upgraded it, and it, it really made that computer fly. It wasn't a Pentium class rig, of course. I never did use the Pentium Overdrive until recently, when the AST machine was upgraded from a Pentium 100 to 166 with an Overdrive processor. Um, but they were, I thought they were really cool, and, uh, you know, if you wanted to upgrade your computer, it was an easy slot in. And I know some even had a separate overdrive processor socket, I think, where you didn't even take the old processor out, you just plunk the new overdrive in, and you're good to go. Um, so I love the idea of it, and of course bought into it as well, never upgraded to Pentium. Um, but it was really cool. Got some hard drives, quantum fireballs. I think everyone's heard or seen of the quantum fireballs. Um, <laughs> yeah, 2.0 gig, 4.3 gig, wide scussy 4.3, not cheap. Uh, 1,080 megabytes, 840 megabytes. Quantum Fireball, that's, that's the one. Now, this is a pretty boring ad. Connor Hard Drive for low prices. There you go. With the splash and that's it. Nothing else interesting. I guess high performance disks for servers and workstations. So, you know, again, business catalog, right? We got the index here again with some lovely pictures of the uh, Sam Blaster uh, Discovery CD bundle and Corel Draw that I wanted so badly. Um, yeah, there's a Mac catalog separately, I remember. They have a PC catalog, so you could call specifically to get this catalog ordered. But then once you ordered one thing, they kept sending you this catalog, and it would show up in the mail. And, you know, my dad had a business, so that's how we got some of these. And I'm just like, oh, a new one came in. And he's like, oh, here you go. I just loved flipping through these business catalogs. I mean, yay, here's a listing of memories. It just looks so cool. So here I got all the memory expansions. Um, instead of just giving the specs of the memory, they're basically saying, here's the memory that fits this particular model. So if I wanted a compact... Prolinea 575, 32 megabyte kit, then I knew what it was. I wouldn't worry so much about chips and everything, because up here you had the generic memory, basically, but then uh, this will be the brand name memory uh, coming from the manufacturer, costing more, obviously, you know, tested and whatnot. I uh, got the Dell Dimension XPS down here. P75, P90, 32 megabyte kits. Not cheap, but that's what memory costs, so I actually had to upgrade my uh, 4633. Uh, because when I got it, it couldn't run really anything. It came with 4 mega RAM, upgraded to 8, I believe, and then things were a lot better from there. Uh, finishing up here, we got some uh, cool software. Remove it. If you uninstall software, you can use that, I guess. Software trying to install software. Okay. Uh, and then we have a uh, Trackman uh, Marble. Uh, I do have a soft spot for track, uh, track not to track man, but just. Uh, trackballs in general, because uh, my friend and I we used to play TIE Fighter and we didn't have a joystick. Um, so we used to play TIE Fighter with a trackball and like, okay, we got to shoot down the Rebels and spin the trackball really, really fast. But um, it, it's hilarious to look through this. And I used to look through these for a long time. I thought they were really cool. And I got a few more of these as well. Maybe I'll do another um, extra bit or something on these as well. But it's just a fun, to, fun thing to walk through. So... Hope you enjoy this and uh, can join me again for the next extra bit. So, thanks for watching.